Okay. Uh, hello, everyone. Um, thank you all for uh, joining us this morning or possibly this afternoon, depending on where you are. Um, it looks like we have about uh, 10 attendees. Um, I think that's about where we're going to going to land for this one. So we'll go ahead and get started. Um, here we go. Oh, my name is, is Chris Carlson. I, looking at the list of attendees, I think uh, most of us already know each other. Uh, as a brief introduction, uh, I work on the Lighting Global Quality Assurance Team. Uh, <clears throat> I've been uh, pretty much your, your go-to guy for, for all things uh, related to engaging with uh, governments on, on, on policy, uh, which is what we'll be digging into today. Uh, so today uh, we'll, we'll be um, looking uh, closely at um, the transition of the IEC standards, uh, of the quality standards to the IEC. Uh, just uh, point you towards where you can go for resources and support on all things related to uh, quality assurance and also working towards uh, strengthening our collaboration. So um, we'll dig into that and then have some time for, for discussion at the end. We'll, uh, uh, take you all off of mute and, and hopefully we can have some, some stimulated, stimulating uh, conversation about uh, uh, how we can uh, improve our collaboration going forward. So diving right into it, um, as many of you know, we uh, hold the quality standards for uh, Pico PV products, which range up to uh, 10 watts peak, and solar home system kits that uh, cover systems all the way up to 350 watts. Uh, and we are now working with the IEC to uh, transfer those standards over to them. Um, so we've submitted them, <coughs> our quality standards to the IEC. Uh, there you can see the, the number that it's going to be uh, designated as, so 62257-13-1. Um, and this uh, technical specification will cover Pico PV products and solar home system kits. Uh, we're fairly well advanced into the process. Uh, the IEC is currently revising the standards document to address comments received. Uh, and then in parallel, uh, we're working with stakeholders to consider ways that we can strengthen the requirements. So a few things that are, are notable is that we're, we're looking at beefing up uh, the, the safety requirements for PV modules uh, and for batteries. So um, some of you may have seen um, in the news or in your, your networks that um, lithium ion batteries uh, have been problematic. You've probably seen uh, something in the news about uh, the, the Samsung phones that were spontaneously starting fires. Uh, even some of these um, kits that we're dealing with uh, in Southeast Asia have, have caused some problems too. So um, the industry, as well as Lighting Global, um, we're thinking that it's time that we we, we address those before it gets too out of hand. Um, and then we're also looking at additional labeling and, and performance reporting requirements. So with all that, uh, we're pulling together the stakeholder comments, making some final revisions, and uh, the, the standards are, are being submitted back to the IEC, um, which uh, they will go through their um, review and, and voting process that could likely be done uh, around October. Um, and so looking at the timeline, uh, we're still uh, optimistic that the, the standards will be published by the IEC uh, at the end of this calendar year. So you're saying, okay, that's great. What, what does that mean for us? What's the big deal? Um, so the really important thing to consider is that um, once the standards are moved to the IEC, uh, governments will be able to adopt those standards much more easily. So uh, all of the standards bodies that we work with um, are very familiar with, with IEC standards. Uh, they, they deal with them on a daily basis. Um, and so they, this familiarity leads to a perception of, of lower risk uh, as compared to how we've been working over the past years, dealing with our lighting global quality standards um, when we uh, 
try to engage with a, a standards body, they're saying, well, who are you? Is Lighting Global a, a standard setting organization? Uh, why would we want to adopt standards from some World Bank IFC program? And so there's a lot of back and forth and a lot of explaining that needs to be done um, that, that really slows down the process. Um, so also moving to the IEC, um, it's going to uh, really increase um, the appetite for, um, for adoption of standards. Um, starting with countries that already have uh, PICO PV standards, uh, such as Ethiopia, Kenya, Tanzania, um, they, they're already chomping at the bit to update the PICO PV standards uh, to align them with the IEC, and then also bring in the solar home system kit standards since uh, those will also be folded into the IEC standard. Um, then we're also looking at other countries and regional bodies that will want to pursue the same course. Uh, and then other development organizations and energy access, access programs will also see this as an opportunity to, to, um, to reference the standards. So just to give you an idea um, of, of where things stand now, um, this is a, a little map to show you uh, countries that are, are currently uh, pursuing quality standards. Uh, some of the, these countries have already adopted uh, standards, either uh, voluntarily or, or uh, standards that are, are required to be met in the countries. Um, and so, uh, you can see we have a, a pretty good expanse in uh, in Africa and 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 into Asia, um, and so looking forward, um, we are expecting a lot more countries and regional bodies to pursue to pursue IEC uh, standards, and we're even looking at other energy access programs that are likely to to advocate for uh, adoption of these standards. So um, I've I've plugged in a few more countries that that we think are, are likely to um, engage in a standards adoption process. Um, and so um, it's pretty obvious that we have, we have a lot of work ahead for ourselves and uh, subsequently we'll need to uh, adjust our strategy and, and really improve our coordination with, uh, with other organizations and uh, the public and private sector to, to make this a success. Um, so thinking about how this is going to affect our work, um, as a first point, we'll need to increase our outreach and coordination. So, um, you know, a good starting point is we just need to inform all of the stakeholders uh, that the IVC standards are, are now in place. Um, and so we're talking about the public and private sector. We even need to, you know, rely on you all who are attending this call to spread the word uh, within the World Bank group and, uh, and as consultants. Um, and then also, as, as we're interacting with other development organizations and energy access programs, um, they're gonna need to be aware of, of, of this shift over to the IEC, uh, as, as a lot of these programs have been referencing uh, the Lightning Global Quality Standards. So it's, it's not just a, a shift in terminology or name, it's, it's really a, a different structure that um, is going to facilitate um, a lot of the, the standards work that we're doing. Uh, I see, uh, Oliver, thanks for your question. Um, I'll just wrap this up a little bit and um, we should have a quite a big chunk of time for, for Q&A and, um, and some uh, engaging discussion. So, um, hang tight on that one. We'll 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 address that when we get there. Uh, <clears throat> so, looking at the map, uh, we'll also need to uh, in, engage more broadly um, with with uh, countries. But um, I think it's important to divide the countries into um, let's say different stages of of the process. So um, I'd mentioned Ethiopia, Kenya, Tanzania, a handful of other countries that were early adopters. Um, and so we have great relationships with, um, with the decision makers in a lot of these countries. Um, we made a lot of groundwork and so uh, it'll be relatively easy to, to work with them to 
uh, update the, the standards they have for PICO PV, um, as well as to extend the standards to, to, uh, to cover uh, solar home system kits. Um, and as I'll touch on a little bit more shortly, uh, a key piece of this engagement with the early adopters is going to be supporting uh, implementation of a, of a QA framework. So thinking about, okay, you have standards in place, what do you do with them? How are you going to improve your market and energy access using those standards? Um, and then uh, looking back on the, the map that with the green countries that I added and possibly more, um, there are new countries coming in that are gonna be starting at ground zero. Um, we're talking about some countries that they don't yet have a good understanding of their market. Um, they don't, haven't yet done an assessment of, of the capacities that they have to uh, adopt standards, to enforce standards. And um, so these new entrants are going to need um, a more uh, in-depth support uh, that will possibly be um, more uh, resource intensive. Um, and so uh, I'd like to flag this one up as, as a, a place where um, we'll really need to uh, coordinate with ourselves um, among the World Bank Group um, and, and Lighting Global QA at a minimum um, to really uh, be efficient in, in working with these countries. Um, and then we also have an increasing number of, of other stakeholders that will be referencing standards. So as an example, um, in the humanitarian aid sector, uh, having IEC standards will uh, surely um, get into their procurement processes. And so um, thinking about what those types of stakeholders will need um, is really important. We'll need to go into uh, our collective strategies. Um, and so thinking about how we will adjust our strategy, um, what, what I'm envisioning is that since the I, uh, transition of standards to the IEC um, will streamline adoption at, at the national and regional levels. Um, we should be able to essentially put together a toolkit um, and provide some, some resources and, and light touch support um, to uh, bureaus of standards and, and regional bodies um, to help them move through the, the standards adoption process. Um, but where the, the real challenge comes into play is that a lot of um, countries, they don't, they're not sure what to do with the standards once they get them. So oftentimes their, their vision of, of what standards are kind of just ends at adopting standards and, and they don't really think through, okay, how do we use those standards? What roles uh, need to be filled? Um, how do we work with the, the private sector? Um, what are the different um, tools that we have um, to, to leverage the standards to, um, to meet their particular goals? Um, so there, there's a lot of complexity involved there, um, a lot of challenges. And so going forward, I see that we're going to have to shift our focus a little bit more from what we've been doing in the past, just trying to get countries on board to actually working with countries to find a strategy that works uh, appropriately um, according to you know, the, the situation in each country. Um, and so uh, as more and more countries come on board, uh, as other stakeholders uh, begin referencing standards, uh, we'll just need to be really um, resource efficient. So we, we're gonna need to think about how we can support all these different players um, without just uh, using up all of our resources and, and finding ourselves unable to, to keep up. So uh, just a, a few opportunities and risks that, that have come to mind um, as we transition to IC standards. Um, I think it will be useful to hear from, from you all once we get um, to our discussion, uh, if you identify some, some other opportunities that, that uh, this, this might um, uh, provide, or if you see other risks that I haven't haven't identified. Um, so on the on the opportunity side, I'm seeing that uh, there's uh, increased standards harmonization. So uh, that one's pretty straightforward. Um, subsequently, there should be an increased demand for high quality products, which will lead more companies 
um, to quality verify their products and bringing more of the private sector on board with what we're doing. Um, I think a, a key opportunity is that this can serve as a, a stepping stone towards harmonization of related standards. So we're talking about um, the plug and play or the component based solar and home systems, um, which we're currently working on. I discussed that in the, uh, in the last webinar. Um, also possibly linking this to um, minimum energy or minimum efficiency uh, requirements or looking at um, appliance standards. Um, so I think that this is a, a really positive step towards um, bringing uh, these kinds of standards for the off-grid energy space into the mainstream. Um, and then, as I mentioned before, uh, we're gonna have a bit more visibility as we transition over to the IEC, the standards to the IEC. So um, it's gonna allow us to engage with um, other uh, actors that um, haven't really crossed paths with us up till now. Um, some risks that came to mind um, is that the standards could possibly be um, implemented in ways that are not uh, beneficial or productive. Um, so for example, if a, if a country doesn't have a market that's, um, that's ready for uh, mandatory quality standards, or if they don't have the, um, the capacity to enforce standards, uh, things can really backfire. Um, so uh, this is something that all of us will really need to keep in mind um, is that we'll need to do our due diligence, um, do our homework before we engage um, with, uh, with different countries and, and possibly regional bodies, um, just to make sure we feel confident that we can uh, advocate, advocate for an appropriate approach. Um, another risk is that um, certainly Lighting Global QA and possibly your teams um, might not be prepared for what I'm seeing is the possibility of a, a huge wave of, of interest in, um, in quality assurance in this space. Um, so uh, I think that we'll just need to see uh, how things roll out, but uh, there's a possibility we might find ourselves uh, a little bit overwhelmed as um, countries are in a hurry to adopt standards or uh, energy access programs are, are moving uh, are interested in, in uh, using this, this QA framework. Um, so I think an important thing to keep in mind there is that uh, we need to improve our, our coordination. So um, uh, the lack of coordination will uh, you know, be problematic going forward. And so that's really what I emphasize here. And that's why I'm really pleased that you're all joining me on this call. Uh, it means that you're interested in, in working closely together and, and keeping track of, of what's happening on the QA front. So quickly to touch on our resources and then we'll um, dive into a, a discussion section. Um, so of course you have, you have us as a resource. Um, so we have just remote technical and policy support. By that I mean, uh, getting in touch uh, with us via email or phone calls. Uh, we have our uh, team at, at CLASP who's um, um, represented in, in DC. Also, there's a big team in, in Nairobi um, and uh, they have a, a large network that uh, is not necessarily um, solely dedicated to Lighting Global QA, but um, a pretty large presence. Plus we have our uh, our colleagues at uh, the Shots Energy Research in California, who are always uh, prepared to, um, to support any uh, technical questions. Um, and then of course, we're um, uh, directly engaging with the public and private sectors and development partners. Um, going forward, we're, we're looking to uh, bring on some, some new people on our team, uh, likely uh, some Africa-based uh, consultants who will uh, be able to help us um, with this direct engagement instead of uh, flying people from our team all over the place trying to, trying to keep up. And then uh, we have our capacity building activities. So this webinar series, um, we also plan to have further um, training workshops um, that will uh, invite World Bank 
group uh, people to those as well. Uh, also want to highlight we have our uh, QA practitioners resource, pa resource page. Um, for those of you who haven't been there, I think it's worth uh, checking out. Note that it is um, a hidden page, so it's uh, password protected. Just need to plug in L LGQA 2019 to, to get in there. And so uh, we're constantly updating that page um, uh, with uh, events uh, that we're doing. So uh, later on, we'll be uploading a recording of this event, plus slides and supporting documents. You can access a database for policy, um, all sorts of reference materials, the QA framework, and guidance documents for um, various stakeholders um, with whom you engage. Um, so uh, please do take a look. Uh, uh, it could uh, save you a lot of time and frustration just um, looking in there um, to, to find what's available. Um, so uh, I think that's, I'll get off my soapbox and um, we'll uh, unmute everybody and uh, have some time for discussion. So um, really I've, I've just listed out a few things um, that, that might be um, interesting topics for you. Um, so questions or concerns about the IEC standards, how we can leverage opportunities. Um, again, as I'd flagged up, um, looking at the potential risks and how to handle those, um, how we can better engage with stakeholders, improving our collaboration and and most importantly for me, um, I'd really like to hear um, how we can better support you. So what additional resources you have or you, you need um, and how we can uh, fulfill all the, the support that you need. Um, so uh, I guess I think I need to click on everybody to allow to talk here. There we go. Okay. So first, uh, I guess I'll um, uh, touch on, on Oliver's question. He asked, when will the shift to IEC be completed? Um, so uh, we are expecting um, the IEC to, uh, to publish the, the quality standards uh, by the end of this calendar year. Um, so uh, going back to, um, the increased engagement that we're expecting. Uh, I imagine the floodgates are gonna open in, in January and uh, we're gonna have a lot of work to do um, on national and regional levels as, as countries um, want to, to get on board with uh, a QA framework. Uh, so I think I've uh, allowed everyone to talk. Um, so I'll open up the floor to you. Um, so please, uh, if you have a um, question, comment, uh, whatever, uh, please unmute yourself and um, let us hear from you. Uh, we have a question coming in from Asif. Um, I have a question regarding IEC standard, which will, which will be published later this year. Go ahead, Asif. Uh, are you able to unmute, unmute yourself? Uh, hello? Yes, go ahead. Okay. Uh, yeah, thank you so much for your uh, presentation as well. Yes, Basically, we hear you. Yeah, we have a, you know, uh, we have here also a project uh, quite similar to the uh, solar home kits. Uh, it's also financed by the World Bank. And uh, uh, now in this uh, uh, in this project in this solar home kits, we have uh, they have identified the standard of six two two five seven dash nine dash five, and this uh, standards has already been conveyed to the uh, to the stakeholders and like private sectors who, who will be very soon uh, involved uh, uh, as a as a, as our vendor and as they they will be installer. And they will be they will offer to the to the to the to the public. So this standard has already been conveyed in different seminars here. So as you mentioned that you will you are also working on six two two five seven dash thirteen and one. So uh, will it be like uh, required to change this standard to this one? 
I got you. Good, good question, Asif. Um, so uh, let me just tell you a little story about um, how the, the standards and test methods came to be. Um, so um, basically Lighting Global, it was actually Lighting Africa uh, a decade ago when we first started. Um, we came up with a set of quality standards and, and test methods. So laboratory method, methods that could be used to assess products um, to determine if they meet a set of quality standards. And so um, I would say about five years ago, um, the test methods um, were successfully transitioned to the IEC as um, 62257-9-5, which is what you referenced. So um, uh, the, those are the test methods. So that tells laboratories how they need to evaluate products. So when we've been engaging with, um, with bureaus of standards, like I said, the, the engagement has been rather challenging because we're saying, okay, there's IEC test methods, but the quality standards themselves are held by Lighting Global. So it's, it's not, it's, two pieces of the, um, the pie that are required to have a, a full quality assurance framework, the test methods and the standards. And so what's happening now is we're transitioning also the, the quality standards to the IEC. So everything, the standards and the test methods will be held under the IEC, um, which is really going to simplify our engagement. We won't have to have this conversation with uh, organizations and, and standards bureaus saying, okay, it's half IEC, half Lighting Global. So going forward, um, for, for programs like the one that, that you mentioned, uh, instead of referencing the Lighting Global quality standards, um, the program will be referencing the IEC test methods, which are dash nine dash five, and the IEC quality standards, uh, both for PICO PV and SHS kits, that are uh, dash 13 dash one. Does that make sense? Yeah, I'm getting your point. But uh, at the moment before publication, can we you know, use this standard in the documents or to convey it to the private sector? Because uh, till it is not published, we, can we use this standard in our documents? I'm, I'm afraid not. Uh, it just um, doesn't exist yet, right? Yeah, so yeah. We're, we're actually encountering um, the same situation uh, in, in ECOWAS, in the um, West African um, uh, regional organization. They, mm -hmm. They're ready to go ahead with uh, standards adoption, um, but the standards aren't there yet. So we're, we're working with them to get everything in place yeah. and then come uh, early 2020, uh, they will have everything ready and they'll be able to, um, to officially adopt the, the standard. Okay. Okay. Uh, related question. This is Oliver. Um, and hi, Asif. Um, Asif yeah, and I work together. Um, yeah. So, I mean, is it not the case that these are already published in draft form and could be re referred to in draft or that there's no public record that IEC is looking at this? So yeah, the um, good question. The um, the draft quality standards are first of all very closely aligned with the existing Lighting Global quality standards, uh, just with some uh, minor adjustments. But uh, currently, it's it's internal to the IEC. Um, so the IEC um, won't release um, the the draft standards. Uh, for external consumption until until later on down the road. Okay, fine. Yeah, okay, and uh, one, another thing you just mentioned in the risks, you highlighted that uh, uh, unless they don't have any capacity or, uh, or uh, uh, to, 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 you know, to adopt this uh, such kind of system, it will, it will you know, make uh, things uh, more complicated but you must have a capacity. So what sort of a capacity, I mean, what type of a capacity you uh, required uh, to, 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 you know, to uh, successfully implement these standards? Uh, what, what, what sort of uh, risk this is, are you referring? Capacity? So, yeah, that, I'm glad you're touching on the risk because I think this is um, uh, a topic um, 
that uh, you all as, as practitioners uh, have, a, have a good grasp of, of how things work, um, depending on the region or the country in, in which you're active. Um, and so just speaking from our experience um, uh, supporting countries to adopt standards, um, for, for countries that are, are um, new to this, um, to this space, um, there's a fair bit of um, direct support that's needed. So um, people that are, that are on the ground who have connections with um, decision makers, um, who also have a knowledge of the technology and the standards and um, just more broadly the you know, energy access uh, and off-grid um, energy. Um, so, you know, it's, we need people to, to lead initial engagement um, who are, are knowledgeable um, but all about technology and standards, but also knowledgeable about the particular market and the, the policy environment um, and able to build those relationships. Um, and so uh, that's why you all are very important resources for, for what we're doing. Um, uh, you, you know, know people who are operating in, in certain countries. You yourselves are, uh, you know, are actively engaged in, in some of these places. Um, and so as we have more and more countries interested in getting involved, um, we may very well find ourselves um, lacking the ability to um, do what's required to, to engage with those uh, public sector stakeholders. Um, and to do it um, in a timely manner. Uh, anyone else want to want to chime in? Um, uh, I'm also interested to hear how um, we may be able to better support the work that, that you all are doing. Um, any any requests? Any uh, <laughs> complaints are okay too. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, they say, uh, you know, basically, uh, there are like uh, uh, a lot of uh, quality standards regarding these uh, adopting, like you mentioned about the battery safety as well. Uh, I mean, they, at the moment, the lithium ion battery is, uh, is becoming popular. The, uh, the Chinese stuff, so they are coming in and they are uh, in the lithium ions are embedded in the, in their, in their lights and in their kits. So, uh, uh, but uh, the other thing is, of course, the when you are considering about the IEC standards, the uh, the of course the, the the cost shoots up if we consider the lithium ion batteries. Now, the as you mentioned about the capacity building as well, the capacity of the in the risk you already touched it well. So, uh, you know, a, a lot of uh, monitoring and something monitoring stuff like going on here to 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 successfully implement the uh, the IEC qualified uh, or standardized products in the market so uh, so i think uh, uh, what what would the, what do you you know comment on this uh, if suppose uh, IEC standard is qualifying a particular uh, battery uh, in a solar home kit particular like a lithium ion battery uh, which may, you know, rises the, the cost is as well, and that make, you know, uh, the uh, market too much, as you know, that the market is too competitive. So when we, when the government is, uh, is giving such kind of uh, offers for financing to the, uh, to the public, so then may, this is a possibility that it will not be a competitive, the IC standard and not be a competitive as compared to the available uh, stuff in the market. Hello. Hi, as if I can hear you. Not sure what happened. Okay. As if we can hear you, uh, Chris. Yeah. Do you have any comments on on the last um, uh, the last uh, our discussion that was just uh, 
presented? Yeah, no. I mean, but I just to know, I mean, the comment on, uh, I mean, just wanted to know about your comment on such kind of, uh, uh, like, lithium-ion battery, suppose embedded in the system, it, of course, uh, you know, shoots the cost high. So uh, what sort of uh, other, you know, standards, uh, you know, you are thinking about in the battery, especially in the battery, suppose in the solar home kits, there are some batteries involved in it. We have a lighting standard. We have a in the kits. We have a solar crystal uh, photo, uh, the, uh, the mono and polycrystalline standards. But in the battery standards, there are this. You know, as usual, you have a lead acid batteries, but you don't have any uh, the lithium ion uh, batteries standards. Uh, so, uh, are there any sort of a working going on in the new? as you are going to planning to publish uh, in this, later in this year, is there any consideration of the standards on the lithium ion battery or some sort of a similar techno a similar materials? Chris, I believe yeah. this is a question for you, yes. <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry folks, I was somehow kicked off the, the webinar and had to sign back on. Um, as see if I understand correctly, you're asking if, um, the revisions that we're doing to the, the quality standards as we submit them to the IEC, if they cover um, uh, lithium uh, battery safety, is that right? Yeah, yeah, the batteries, yeah. Or lithium yeah. or similar, lithium phosphide, like something like that. Yeah, yeah, so absolutely. Um, we, um, we've we been uh, closely engaging with, uh, um, with battery experts. Um, uh, and also with the um, IEC uh, committees who focus on batteries, as well as the, the private sector. And, and everyone's pretty much in agreement that um, we need to uh, beef up the, the quality or the safety requirements for lithium batteries. And so um, effectively what we're doing is not creating anything new. We're just um, adding, um, requirement that the lithium batteries need to meet existing uh, IEC standards that that cover safety that cover battery safety okay. um, and so there are, there are um, uh, three different types of um, battery safety that, that we're dealing with so one is uh, transportation safety so um, it's requiring that um, that they meet the requirement so that there's no or a little risk of um, of, of fire or explosion um, during air transport. So that's a UN 38.3 is what it's called, which is pretty standard practice for, um, for uh, products that have, have lithium batteries. Um, the other two are uh, existing IEC standards um, for uh, um, products with lithium batteries. Um, one is for uh, portable devices and one is for stationary devices. Um, and, and so we are um, referencing that, planning to reference that whole suite of um, requirements uh, according to the different type of application. So Chris, you asked what would be useful uh, for people like us. Um, just very quickly, because I need to leave, but um, yeah, the, most, the single most useful thing really for, for us, I think, is uh, ready to go language that can be slotted into the procurement TUR, or, well, not procurement in this case, but um, you know, scheme um, participation, scheme eligibility TOR, uh, and that kind of thing. So, um, bundling it up, making the references between the testing and the new standard, and all this kind of thing, um, and any other explanatory text that's needed, just having that ready to go so we don't have to invent it every time. Uh, that would be the single most useful thing from our point of view. Great, that's a that's a great recommendation. Thank you. Any other any other requests from from other attendees? Uh, love to hear it, Chris. This is not a request as such, but um, I. It'd be helpful for me if you could just contextualize the IEC adoption process and all the extra work that you think is going to come out of that in terms of increased government adoption and more demand for support um, within any other plans that Lighting Global has. Is this sitting side by side with um, 
work to, for example, steadily expand the scope to include productive uses or appliances, anything like that that you're working on in parallel? Uh, so it, while it's not directly linked to um, the other work that we're doing, so for example, the component-based um, solar home system standards, um, I, I see it, like I mentioned before, as, um, as kind of a, a nice stepping stone and a transition to um, bring more uh, policymakers um, into our, our fold, um, get them familiar with, with what we're doing in our, in our approach towards, um, towards energy access and, and quality assurance framework, um, and kind of laying down the, the foundation then once we, you know, move towards um, supporting more of the, the component-based solar home system standards, uh, also looking at possibly appliances or um, even, you know, if, if we think that um, um, minimum efficiency requirements uh, should be part of, uh, of the QA framework, we'll, we'll have a, a captive audience and I think we'll, we'll be able to make a lot more progress. I'm not sure if that really responded to your question, how you're thinking, Charlie. No, it does in the sense that this is kind of, um, you know, where everything is going down the line, right? So different, different products are at different stages along this journey, but in many respects, um, being able to advance everything to IEC certification in one place puts us in a very good position to take forward the earlier stage areas that you're also looking at, or at least that's what I heard. Is that right, Chris? Yeah, the, in my opinion, uh, yeah. Um, it's, it's really, this transition is, in, in short, mainstreaming uh, our, our QA framework. It, it gets our foot in the door um, with a lot of uh, stakeholders that may have been hesitant to, to get involved because it was a, um, a World Bank Group uh, project, right? Um, exactly. So and I've heard uh, that over and over again, yeah. just to reiterate yeah. it. I mean, I think being able to say this is IEC, is really going to change a lot of the conversations that the people like me have been having. Right. And so, you know, that's what my thinking is that we'll need to equip you all um, to explain this and to, to leverage it when, when you're engaging with, uh, with various uh, governments. Great. Thanks, Charlie. Uh, anyone else? Hey, Chris, it's Lindsay. I um, guess I just had a few questions for you just about, I mean, I, you and I obviously speak often, but just in terms of how you would like us to engage with you all in terms of uh, you leading on discussions, especially with early stage governments looking to adopt uh, the standards versus uh, the kind of country teams taking those conversations forward and you in a supporting role. Um, what is the ideal relationship with all of us who are kind of doing the country level support? Yeah, thanks. Um, this is good. I have a similar question, if I may. Yeah, go ahead, Eddie. Yeah, sorry, I had an echo. It's sort of, uh, hold on one second, I think it's big. Can you hear me well? Bit of an echo. There we go. Sorry, I don't know. Okay. okay. Let me type the question. Okay. Uh, while Fed is talking, um, uh, Lindsay, I, I think it's need kind of a, a nuanced answer, a bit of a caveat here. Um, so it's kind of going back to the, the question of uh, resource availability. Um, so as it is now, uh, here at Lighting Global QA, um, we are, are definitely resource constrained. Um, so, you know, we're, we're already stretched rather thin with the workload that we have. Um, we have some, um, some things in the pipeline that, um, that, is going to, that are going to support uh, increased engagement on, on several levels, um, which, which includes um, uh, direct engagement with um, some additional countries. Um, but, uh, um, so... You know, once we once we get to that point, we'll, we'll be able to identify, and this is something that we should do for you all. Say, okay, here are the focus countries um, with whom um, we have budget to to engage 
um, at a, up to a particular, or up to a certain extent. Um, and then, you know, there's always kind of opportunistic things that arise. So, uh, for example, um, Lindsay, you, you know, you're working in Lesotho um, or, or wherever it is. Um, and they say, hey, we're interested in standards. Well, uh, just because um, a, a particular country isn't, you know, one of our focus countries, I don't think that's necessarily a reason that we say, sorry, we just need to let them do whatever they want because things could go really bad and it's just not good for the, you know, the, the broader picture. Um, but that being said, um, you know, for, for those kind of things that pop up, um, we, it will certainly have to be light touch support from our end. Um, and um, for that, it's, it's really important that, um, you know, we have uh, practitioners like you all who um, feel confident about the, the subject matter and you have a general idea of how to uh, move things forward and steer the conversation. And then you can ping us with, uh, uh, with some particular questions or if you need some, some guidance on, um, you know, developing a, an approach um, associated with the, the, the QA framework in a particular country or region. Um, so for the, our focus countries, yeah, uh, you know, we're going to have, um, we're planning to have additional um, uh, people coming on, uh, Africa-based, probably an, an Anglophone and a Francophone person um, that we'll be able to dispatch um, rather easily um, to, to engage there. Um, but nonetheless, in a lot of places, especially now considering that the, the IFC, um, lighting Africa programs are starting to tra transition out, uh, specifically in Ethiopia, um, Tanzania, um, Nigeria, um, we're going to need, um, some additional local resources and, and people who are engaged with the decision makers to, to be effective. Um, and so, so in those particular instances, uh, we will need to rely on, on you and your networks to, to be effective. Uh, Thanks. see what we have. Uh, did you type in your question? Not seeing it. Uh, Chris, I, I have it. I don't know if it, it says similar to Lindsay, current efforts are more focused on adoption of standards. What type of support can we expect from the Lighting Global QE team when it comes to enforcement strategies and advice? Yeah, um, also a good one, Fede, thanks. Um, so like I had um, uh, mentioned uh, a previous slide, um, I see our role shifting a lot. Um, where we'll, we should be providing some light touch support for standards adoption, since it's going to be streamlined more or less, um, and, and shifting a lot of effort and resources over to the, the question of, of uh, standards implementation. Um, and so uh, in, certainly in, in countries that uh, are our, our focus, um, so primarily these are, these are countries that have uh, have large markets for these products, um, or potentially large markets for these products, and also countries that um, have already um, started to go down the pathway of adopting standards and, and considering uh, how to use those standards. Um, we will certainly be engaging closely, um, both um, with with the World Bank Group um, and the the local stakeholders. Um, public and private sector. Um, so, uh, you know, a, a, a real challenge is that um, they, like you said, Fede, the, the governments often just are a little bit short-sighted when it comes to, to quality assurance and they have kind of a, a naive understanding. It's like, okay, we just get standards in place and then it's all gonna sort itself out. Kind of like the, if you build it, they will come type of deal. Um, but uh, you know, best practice shows that um, it's actually an, um, a collaborative process um, starting rather early 
um, once they start looking into standards um, and thinking about, okay, you know, what's our common vision about what we want um, this market to look like or what we want to do with energy access? Um, you know, who does what? How do we use those standards? What um, resources do we have in place to uh, enforce standards? Do we want to um, uh, have mandatory standards where uh, only only products that um, meet the standards can be um, imported in the country? Or do we want voluntary standards that are, are linked to some sort of subsidy scheme um, like uh, import duty or, or VAT reduction, something like that? Um, so. There's a you know a lot of these um, variables and and uh, options that that we have at our disposal, um, but it, it really takes uh, a group effort. Um, so it's not as you all know it's not easy to bring together multiple ministries and and have them coordinating um, towards a, towards a single goal. Um, so uh, yes, we will be. Um, uh, focusing a lot on that, uh, and certainly in in Kenya, uh, in in Nigeria, Ethiopia, Tanzania, some of our focus countries, um, and then starting the groundwork uh, in other countries to help them um, move things forward appropriately. Uh, do we have any anyone else that would like to uh, like to chime in? Well, with that, uh, looks like we're we're just about at the hour. Um, uh, I'm pretty happy we had uh, we had you all attending, and uh, that that we had some time for discussion. Um, as always, please feel free to. To reach out to us, um, uh, you. I think you all should have my email address. Um, and uh, if it's a if it's a question that I can answer, I can definitely point you in the right direction. Uh, and uh, we'll keep you posted with um, more updates about what we're doing, um, more resources that we have for you, and and of course, uh, many of us are are in, in close contact as we um, we move forward uh, together in, in some of the countries in which you're active. Uh, so so thanks again. Uh, have a, a good morning, good afternoon, and um, we'll be in touch.